Hi, I'm Kira Cass, best-selling author of the Selection series, uh, which is turning 10 years old this year. I do not believe that it's physically possible, but everybody's telling me it's true, so I'm gonna roll with it. Let's just take a moment and look back on the series. Kinda like that? Because again, it doesn't feel like it's possible. <laughs> But all this has happened in 10 years. So many books and touring and letters and all, just so much stuff. It just doesn't feel like it could possibly happen in 10 years, but it has. And um, so it's still just disbelief. It's just, it just feels, it feels too fast. One of the first things that comes to mind when I think about the selection is my kitchen table in my house on Courtney Circle, because that's where I wrote most of it. Just, just there, guiding my son playing on the floor in writing it by hand first, like in a notebook. And then um, I had a chandelier on the cover. And then like later in the day, I would go and take what I'd written in the notebook and I'd put it in, a, I'd type it up and it would grow. Uh, and it was, it was really cool to see like how, how that happened. Um, and I remember having to be patient because, because I wrote it the wrong way first. I was making a lot of decisions for America and I remember getting to the end when I finally knew her and realizing I had to do it again. So uh, unfortunately that is still my process. I wish that was not the case. I, I wish that I did not have to wait for them to tell me everything. I wish I had more control, but no, no, it's been like that from the beginning, I'm afraid. How did it change my life? How did it not change my life? I am, so very average <laughs> and from a small town and not exciting, I think in any way, <laughs> but I got to do so many incredible things and meet beautiful, wonderful people. I got, to, I got to have a career that some people would just kill for, but I did not do that on my own. You know, there's a team behind me making it happen. Books don't just magically appear on shelves. And then also, like a partnership with readers. Like I can't make them pick up a book. I can't make you excited about a book. The fact that you were like, that's, that's you. Um, so thanks. The first time I've ever left the country at all was to go to the Philippines uh, for, for a book tour. And I remember pulling up to the first event in the car with Callaway and I step out and I see a horde of people and security guards linking arms, holding them back. And it took me a very long time to process that that was for me, that that many people showed up with that much excitement for a thing that I made. On the book side, there's a reason I don't read them once they're published because all I see are my shortcomings. You know, I could always be doing better. I could always be growing. And as far as like the experience side goes, it was crazy for a couple of years there, more in, um, intense, I think, than any of us thought that it could be. Um, and maybe while I took on a little too much, uh, it was such a brief window that I don't think I would undo it. I don't think I would wish any of it any differently. When I look back, even though it was a wild season, all I feel now is gratitude because again, I know that this is a career that so many people wish they could have, just like a moment where it feels like so many people are connecting with something that you created and I, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay, so in honor of the 10th anniversary of the selection, I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 moments from across the series with you guys. So number one is from the selection when America tells Maxim that it's possible, it gives me like Pride and Prejudice vibes when Mr. Darcy's like, you've given me hope. Uh, I just think hope and possibility, those might be the most romantic things in the world. Number two, also from the selection, is when America tells Aspen, I'm not choosing him or you, I'm choosing me. I wish I could take more credit for some of these lines because I remember just typing that and that came out and I was like, oh mama, okay. Uh, I was just really proud of her because if across the series, she's she is indecisive, she doesn't know what she wants yet and she's kind of timid about things and not so timid about others but like in that moment she she was very much like the situation that i'm in i had no control over but what i'm going to do with it i do and i loved that about her loved it 
Number three is from the Elite when Maxon brings back Halloween for America. Just casually resurrects a holiday for his girl. Love it. And number four goes hand in hand with that because he was prepared to propose dressed as a pirate. He was ready. Number five is from the one and it's basically the entirety of Aspen's character. He's still sort of growing here and interacting with America, even though he knows he's losing her and he's starting to develop feelings for somebody else and he can see her and Maxon together and I think is in a way rooting for them, but still not over her. It's, it's, it's hard. And then realizing, I think that he likes Maxon as a person and then trying to redefine what he thinks it is to be a man. Like so much is happening to him in that book. I, people ask for the stories again, from Maxon's perspective, I would love I would love more of Aspen's cause, cause I love him. Number six also from the one is when Maxon and America are looking at his wall of photographs and she realizes that if he had a choice in life, he'd be a five. It's just a sense of equality. And I think it comes up in a lot of my books uh, with, the, with couples in particular. Um, and I really just love that moment there that if he could choose, they'd be on the exact same plane. Number seven is from the epilogue from after the one. Uh, at Maxon's birthday party when Maxon and Aspen are just having their little chat. It's just sweet. And when I tell you that like they're still in my head and that the bromance is real and that they super love each other, like I can't, I cannot. Just, I love it. Number eight is from the air when Elin is meeting her suitors. Like that whole moment, like that whole, I love it. Cause you have like quiet protective Aspen kind of hanging out and then uh, these boys rolling through and she's just like shutting them down <laughs> one after one. Kyle comes in and he's super sassy, but kind of friendly. And then you get to Henry and Aiko and she's like, what do I even do with this? It's just super chaotic. And I kind of love it. <laughs> Number nine is from the crown. Henry's sister is named Annika. And I was not done with that name. I loved it too much. So that's the name of, uh, of my girl in A Thousand Heartbeats. And number 10 from The Crown is the epilogue, the sense that life goes on, because um, it very much does. This, this family, this group of people, these friends, they're still there and their, their lives are still happening beyond what's on the page. And I just really like that sense of it just going on and on. Honestly, I'm so honored. When I sat down to write it, I knew that I wasn't making anything groundbreaking or deeply philosophical. I, I just was writing a love story. But to find that people find characters that they resonate with or themes that I did not even intentionally put in the book, but they, as clever readers, have drawn out of it, that's, that's wonderful. And for people to still be finding it 10 years later, it gives me hope that it could be found you know, another 10 years after this. And what a privilege that is to be the person who wrote the book that somebody quotes without thinking, you know, your favorite book when you were a teenager, your favorite book now, that is no small thing. And it is not lost on me. And honestly, I just want to say thank you. There have been some really crazy times in these last 10 years, ones I certainly was not prepared for. And I don't know what the next 10 look like, but thank you so much for uh, the joy of being a part of your life, of being the person who made the book that you wanted to like go and hide in for a little while, to be the person who made the book that comforted you on a bad day. And on that note, if you have any special moments from reading the books or sharing them with a friend, uh, please drop them in the comments below. I would love, love to see um, anything that you have to say about, about the series. And thank you so much. Love you always. Bye.